morning youtube welcome back to the channel it is a beautiful saturday here in florida just a tad spicy but not too bad i went ahead and put up my little 10 by 10 just because i don't really feel like moving the s4 it's been sitting for a while and i just eh, whatever i'll work on this thing in the driveway so today it's gonna be a cool day. We have some parts from B2B Fab. We have wheels and tires over there. It's just, it's gonna be a complete transformation on the Q3. So let me show you what I've got from B2B Fab. Then I'll show you the wheels and tires. All right, I have everything laid out in the trunk. Looks like a lot, but it's not too much. We've got their MQB lift kit right here. This is the front, it is camber correcting to get you nice and straight when you get the alignment. This is the rear here, just some spring spacers basically. Hardware, instructions, stickers. Stickers are the most important thing. Over here, we have the flush kit from them. It's a 15 and 20 mil spacer setup. It includes all the bolts you need, all that's right there. Spacers, hub centric, everything's good. We also have their rear shock extensions. These are gonna be installed onto the rear shocks because of the extra travel we're gonna have. We don't wanna overextend and mess up our shocks. And then right here, is a complete hardware installation kit. All OEM hardware, shock bolts, nuts, end lake nuts, uh, axle bolts, everything for the rear control arm, everything you need is right here in this bag. With their kit, they also include colored instructions, but I'm gonna be doing a video on this today, so you can also use my video along with the instructions for your MQB lift. All right, so, you, so with the instructions, you've got some notes, contents install video link if you want to hit that maybe they'll link mine after i get this done so we've got some front some rear we've got color photos we have torque specs for bolts we have everything we need right here now i've done a lot of installs before so this isn't really anything that i would need but the torque specs are nice because you want to make sure you get everything torque back to spec and good to go so before we move on to the wheels and tires, I want to give a big shout out to BTV Fab for partnering with me on this build. Uh, again, I've, they've been on the channel before. I've known them for a long time. So really excited to finally be working on one of my own vehicles with their parts. Now, let's check out the wheels and tires. All right, I wheeled them out of the garage. Here they are, 1552, of course. I had to go back to them on this. I've used them on a few cars. So big shout out to 1552 for also partnering with me on this one. I went with their 5x112 Alpen MX wheels in bronze. If you don't know, I love bronze. Bronze is just such a good color on most cars. It will look good on the black and it will look good on the color that I'm gonna be wrapping it here eventually as well. These are 17 by eight ET20. So with the spacers effectively, I'm gonna be ET5 in the rear and ET0 up front. It should look very, very good once it's all on. For the tires, shout out to myself because I couldn't get any tire help, but found a pretty decent deal on these Falcon Wild Peak AT4Ws. I went with a 235. 6517. These are an all-terrain tire. They might make a little bit more noise, but that's okay because they look awesome. They have good tread wear. They have really good ratings. Uh, really excited to get these on. I've been going back and forth with whether to start on the rear or the front first. I do need to see if I have the axle nut socket. I don't know if I do, but my buddy Ted is on his way over here. I haven't seen Ted in like 12 years. It has been a long, long time. So I'm really excited to spend the day with him, hang out. He's gonna help me. He has a Mark III that he's driving over. I'll show you guys that when he gets here. So I'm gonna go in, check my toolbox, see if I have the socket. If not, not a big deal. He's bringing one with him. I'll get started on the rear. I'll get this thing jacked up and we'll start getting it blown apart and get this thing lifted. All right, so the front is up on jack stands. Uh, uh, if you guys need help with that, we put them on that little hump of the subframe. This is gonna be, for pretty much all MQB cars, it's gonna be the same. So jack it up on the pinch weld, put it under the subframe, and then you're good to go. As for the bolts we have to take off here, we're gonna pull the axle bolt, the nut and bolt here, the nut off of the end link, drop the end link out. Back here is gonna be a strut spreader what we're gonna to use to get the strut out. Control arm bolts underneath because we're pulling the axle, we need a little bit of extra room to get the strut out because this is gonna be taller than like your GTI, your Golf R. Then we're gonna go up top, get the three up there and then pull the strut out. And just to show you the Mark III I was talking about earlier, this is my buddy Ted's. He drove over from the other coast to give me a hand. Uh, it's got a VR, it has this sort of tan color right now the bumpers are going to get redone he just refinished and put the bbs rs's on it and it looks pretty good all right so everything on the driver's side is disconnected we've got the strut bolt out here the spreader is in there the three lower control arm bolts are ready to go the axle bolt is out 
the sway bar is disconnected. Everything's ready to go now. We have to disconnect the lower control arm from the spindle. Once that's done, the axle will come out and then we should have enough room to get the strut out of the knuckle and then get this out of the car. All right, so we have the front strut. Driver's side is out. Next thing to go in is the spacer with the big hole. That is gonna go right up top here. It only goes one way, so you just have to line it up and make sure all the holes match. Once that is in, you're gonna use the Allen keys that are provided. And part of the instructions, these are gonna get torqued to 30 foot pound. All right, so we got the bottom mount on and we got the top mount on. As you can see, I did put in the factory bolts that go up top and that is to put a breaker bar in there so that we can tighten these down because there's four more bolts up top that have to get tightened to 30 foot pounds. So the breaker bar will essentially hold this across so that we can go ahead and tighten the rest of these bolts down. We did that with the bottom one as well and it was very, very simple. We were trying to put it on the ground and put my foot on it and it just wasn't working. So this would be my recommendation to you guys. All right, so you got the strut hanging here. The top three bolts are back in up top. Next is gonna be getting the strut back into the knuckle, getting the axle out of the way, and then getting the axle back into the hub. And that's pretty much where we're at right now. So we'll check back in in a minute. All right, so the driver's side is reassembled. I didn't feel like recording the struggle bus that we had going on. Uh, it really wasn't that bad. It's just getting the axle seated along with the lower control arm going back in and everything kind of happening in sync because you can't really do one without the other. And the way we did it was we got the axle back into place. We then put the ball joint studs back through the control arm and then jacked everything back up into place. We got the axle back into the spline. This is still the old bolt. We're gonna put the new bolt in once we get everything on the ground so we can torque the new bolt so this is just kind of loosely in there this is back on the lower ball joint nuts are back on and torque the top is good to go we are going to leave the sway bar out all the way until the end because we still have to do the passenger side and looks like i still need to secure this and that's it so we're going to move on to the passenger side next uh one thing to note have some brake clean handy because you are going to make a little bit of a mess when pulling the axle out because the inside of the axle is open so you're going to lose some axle grease uh depending on age and everything of of what actually is in there but I did lose a little bit. So there's a little bit back here. I've got to go get some brake clean, spray this off, spray the ground off. And then, yeah, because you don't really, you don't want to let the axle grease sit back there. I mean, you could, but it's just going to make a sludgy mess for later. So just clean it up now while you have everything disassembled. All right, we're going to move on to the passenger side next. All right, front passenger side, a little bit easier so far because I did not have to pull the axle from the hub. I did loosen it. It's still there, but it's not removed. Uh, struts out. Everything's out, everything's good. This is loose. Ball joint is taken away from the control arm. So now we're gonna move on to attaching B2B's lift to the front strut and let's go do that. All right, so we're putting the first one on. I just wanted to show you guys what I was talking about before with the breaker bar and the two bolts so that we can hold this and it won't spin around and we don't have to like put it on the ground or do anything weird. All right, so you see, we just used two of the other bolts so that I could keep pressure on this so it'll stop from spinning. And you guys wanna laugh a little bit. This is the setup I'm using because I couldn't find my six mil socket. So we have a half inch to three eighths adapter to a quarter adapter to a six mil <laughs> a bit. Uh, yeah, but it worked, so we're good. All right, guys, passenger side is back in. Disregard everything I said, not everything I said, but disregard the point about not having to take the axle out because we had to take the axle out. Uh, as you can see, you know, a little bit of a mess on this side. It wasn't as bad. We were able to get it in quick enough, but because the strut's an inch and a half taller, we couldn't get it back into the spindle. So we did have to pull the lower control arm off as per usual. And we did pull the axle out temporarily to get it all back into place. Rewind back to the other side where I secured the top three bolts first. Um, don't do that. I would say on either side, this side, we put it into the spindle first. It was much easier. The angles were good because once you have the top secured, you don't have a lot of room to move the strut around front and back, side to side. So get it into the spindle first, then at the end, 
go ahead and get it back up into the top once everything is secure. All right, uh, I think everything is tight minus the axle bolt on both sides. So we're gonna go ahead and swap in the new axle bolts, get those snug, put the wheels on, and then move on with this project. All right, guys, uh, we still have to do some cleanup, but the fronts are done. I just tightened the axle bolt, 150 foot-pounds plus a half a turn. Took a breaker bar and a jack handle to get that half a turn. But this is what the front looks like right now. Pretty freaking crazy. It looks, it looks really good. I'm excited. We're gonna move on to the back. I think the front will come down just maybe slightly once the rear goes on because the rear is gonna be raised up just a little bit. So this is it. It's uh, yeah, this is awesome. I love this. This is the fitment with the 15 mil spacer to the front. That is an ET5, 17 by 8 ET5. I think that's looking pretty mint right there. So I'm going to go ahead and get the rear broke free, jacked up, jack stands, start taking it apart, and we'll show you that process. All right, guys, kind of got ahead of ourselves here. We got the passenger side rear disassembled already. The upper shock bolts, 16s. Lower shock and control arm bolt are 18s. Sway bar end link bolt and nut are 13. So you have a total of five pieces of hardware you have to take out and then put a jack under the control arm, lower it down slowly, and that will get the spring out. Next, you have to install the shock extenders onto the OEM shock so you do have to take the top mount off. Try to hit it with the impact that usually works for me, but of course today it did not. So we're gonna do it the right way. That way we don't damage the shock itself. One thing you wanna do is pull out the rubber isolator pad that's down here. There's a clip. You're not gonna reuse that clip. So pull that out, throw it in the bin. After that, the B2B fab spacer goes on the bottom. The spring isolator pad goes on top of that. Put everything back in. Uh, try not to hurt yourself. Get it back up in there and put the control arm bolt back into place. Yeah, that's, um, that's where we're at right now. So looking pretty good. I will probably film the other side just because I forgot to do this side and show you exactly which bolts and nuts we're gonna take out there. All right, passenger side is done. Uh, this side, one thing to note very quickly, down there is the ride height sensor, headlight sensor, whatever you wanna call it. Make sure you take that off before you start disassembling. Top bolts up here, 16s. Okay. And just like that, rear shock is out. Next is gonna be the 18 lower control arm bolt. Bolts are free. Don't forget headlight sensor. Don't forget, don't forget, don't forget. You're gonna break it. End link's free. Everything's good. We should be able to drop the jack down now and pull the spring out. Now we gotta get that plastic retainer out of here again, pull the rubber mount out, reassemble, and uh, that's it, we're done. Rubber isolator's out, plastic thing is thrown in the bin. This is how this goes. You can see the rubber nub is in there. B2B faces up when it's in the car. Spring's gonna go on top of here. Back in the car, bolts back on. Uh, we do still have to do the shock extension, which we're gonna do that probably before we throw the spring back in. Yeah, we are back. All right, so here is B2B Fab's shock extension. Uh, we already did it on the other side. I did not show it to you. So here it is here. It comes with blue Loctite that you put on the threads underneath of this. You tighten this down, it is a seven mil. And then here, if you've got rubber or something just to protect the top of the strut tube, clamp it down with a pair of vice grips, tighten this down, and the blue Loctite should hold everything into place there. Next, the bump stop, the dust boot, the top it's strut old. mount actually goes on. It is tight, so just keep that in mind. That's what that looks like there once it's all installed. This is a lot easier to get on now with that seven mil. Throw your 16 millimeter offset head wrench like this on there, seven mil socket, and tighten it down. Okay, so this is what the spring looks like when it's all assembled. So you have the spacer, the spring pad, the spring, and then the top spring pad stays on there as well. What you wanna do is get this into the lower control arm, have the jack ready, and what we did there's this little opening right here. We set the jack facing towards the front of the vehicle because as you jack this up, the control arm is gonna to wanna to go either way. So when you have it towards the front of the vehicle, it'll pull the control arm up and into the hub right here. So you can see here as it goes up, it pretty much lines up right where it should be. Actually, I think we got it dead on for the camera. How about that? First try. 
So now we're just gonna run the bolt through the control arm so everything stays in place. Put the nut on it, because why not? Then we're gonna put the shock back in. After that, it's gonna be the end links and the sensor over there as well, which is just a ball joint, so that just pops back onto place. All right, upper shock bolts are back and in there. The lower shock bolt, Ted's putting in right now. Just one thing to note, the control arm bolt, the nut faces to the front of the car. Shock bolt, the nut faces to the rear of the car. It's the only difference between the two. Also, shock bolt is slightly longer, maybe by 10 to 15 millimeters than the lower control arm bolt. All right guys, so as we are almost finished with this, the shock bolts, everything there is good. Control arm, lower bolt is in. Have to do the sway bar end link, nut and bolt on both sides, and then get the sensor plugged back on while I'm under there as well. One thing I'm going to note is, this has a ton of droop right now. So the even the factory wheels would not go back on the car right now. So what we're gonna do when we put the wheels back on is from the back of the car, slide the jack under it, and we're gonna jack up the control arm in order to put the wheel back on. I think that will give us enough lift to get the wheel and tire back on. And of course these are bigger, very slightly bigger, not, not by much, but they are bigger than factory. So I think that's gonna work. Now we can go through and jack up the sides and get the jack stands out and we're finished. And I'll show you guys the result. Hey guys, uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's dark time. It's, uh, it's real dark, but we're done. I'm not gonna fully show you it. I'll wait till tomorrow morning and hop back on here and show you it. There's just a little, little teaser. Also, still have to move the car and release the e-brake, so that's not necessarily what it's gonna look like. It'll probably be close though. And honestly, the fitment is it's on point. 20 most space in the rear, 15 in the front. ET0, ET5. 17 by eight, whoa, whoa, I look spooky. 17 by eight with a uh, 235, 65 wild peak. I went over that in the beginning. Um, it's late, it's dark, we gotta clean up. I'm hungry, there's mosquitoes. See you guys in the morning. All right guys, uh, it's been a week, maybe a week and a half. I've been driving the car, I got an alignment done and it's finally time for you to see it. it looks awesome, it drives awesome. I'm very, very happy with it. And here it is. You can see the wheel gap, plenty of room there, and the wheels, they look awesome. And then in the front, same thing, lots of space, a little bit less space on the back side and on the front side. I don't think a bigger tire would fit, I mean you could probably go 245 versus 235, but my friend has 245s and they rub on the inner, I think rear liner. I believe, I think, one of the two. But his offset might be different than mine, so take it with a grain of salt. Here's a front shot. The grill from Canadian Auto Performance. Still looking great. What do you guys think? Again, I love it. I absolutely love driving this car. It is comfortable. Now that it has integrated its tune and it has a little bit more power, I do need to see if I can recalibrate for the slightly bigger wheels and tires. But overall, the speedometer and everything is, is pretty good, off by about one mile per hour. So it's really not too bad. I also have the alignment spec sheet here in the glove box. I'm gonna show you guys that. All right, so here's the spec sheet. You can see front and rear caster camber toe. Before the toe was definitely out. I, uh, I could tell when driving, it wasn't terrible, but after everything is in spec, and then same with the rear, everything is in spec at 0.15. Max is 0.25 for the front, max is 0.15, final is 0.10. So they did a really good job getting this aligned. My camber is slightly off by about, I'm gonna say a degree on the left side. Now that could be because of the subframe. On these cars, you can shift the subframe side to side to get the camera in line. This doesn't bother me enough to do it right now. And I might install O34's locking collars and that, that might put everything dead set in the center. I'd have to look into that. But yeah, again, alignment came out great. Everything with this is just fantastic. And again, just one more little side shot here. So that's gonna wrap up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed, I hope you learned something. I hope that if you decide to lift your MQB platform vehicle, you go with B2B Fab, all of their products, R&D, everything is spot on, everything fits, the instructions are clear. Again, you can use my video if you need to. Before I close this out, I do wanna point out two things. B2B is developing 
their sway bar end links for the front of this. The rear is already done. Uh, I did not install them yet. That's gonna come in a separate video once the fronts are in. I'm gonna do a front and rear sway bar end link install. So for now, you can see there is quite a bit of preload on the sway bar. It is very, very close to the control arm. The end links they're developing are shorter. So once they're installed, that'll pull the sway bar up and get the preload back to where it should be. The other thing I wanna point out is the rear sensor. I think I mentioned it before, how However, you absolutely will need a new rear sensor arm. That is something B2B offers. I have to get under here and actually take some measurements and let them know what I need because right now, everything in there is fine. But if this was to droop down, let's say I get on a crazy angle and it droops or you put it on the lift and as you lift the car up, the wheel drops down, you have a lot of droop. It will for sure break that arm or at least pop it out of socket. I don't really know what will happen. It'll probably overextend it and break it and then I'm gonna have a bad day. And that again is due to the rear shock extensions. That's the only reason. If you don't do the shock extensions, you should have enough play in there because I don't believe my friend Jason did them on his and he hasn't run into any issues with that arm yet. So if you install the extensions, make sure you get a new arm for that rear sensor. All right, so that's gonna wrap this up. Big, big, big thank you to B2B Fab for sending me everything to get this thing looking just fantastic and handling great because it really does drive just so much better than before. Also, big thank you to 1552 for coming on board with the build. I love the wheels. They look awesome. Very, very happy with them as well. Now I gotta wrap this up because my memory card's yelling at me. It's full. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Let me know if you guys have any questions about this. If this is something you wanna do, drop a comment below. I'll answer it. I'll answer any questions you might have. And I'll give you some feedback here in a little while once I get this thing off road. And I'll be sure to do a video on that as well. All right, until next time, you guys take care. Mm -hmm.